Is it totally weird that like I want an entire outfit out of this yarn? I think that's a little weird. Why well, hello and welcome to episode five of Beehooks TV. I'm thrilled that you're joining me today because we are talking about the love-hate relationship we have with novelty and fuzzy yarns. And I wanna present you with seven tips for working with this yarn so that you can power through and reap the benefits of how wonderful the projects can be when you use fuzzy or novelty yarns. Now, first things first, there are so many different types of novelty yarns. So this will be more generalized tips. And I will be demonstrating on a furry yarn, one that I have just grown to absolutely love over the past couple of weeks. And that is for my sponsor, Lion Brand. We're gonna use their newer yarn called Go For Faux. This is what I will use in demonstration. I'll point out a project that I've recently created with this yarn. And this stuff is wonderful. It's actually, sort of your best friend when it comes to fuzzy yarns, because if you look really closely at this yarn, you'll see that there is a strand running through it, almost like a piece of fabric running through it. And that's your best friend when it comes to seeing your stitches while working with this. All of the Gopher Faux yarns are 100% polyester and they are so soft. I wish you could reach through and feel this stuff right now. It is so soft. Now Gopher Faux is in the super bulky number six category. So these projects work up really, really fast. I waited far too long to try Gopher Faux yarn because I couldn't find it in my store. I couldn't find it at Joann's or Michael's. Those are the two that are kind of in my area. Not to say that they don't ever have them, but my location didn't. So what I'll do is have a link in the video description below. Just check that out. It'll direct you right to Lion Brand's website where you can see the different colors that are available. You can order some for your next project. Of course, read those reviews so that you can hear more opinions about this yarn and so you can decide if it's right for your next project. My first tip with working with fuzzy yarns, novelty yarns, yarns with no stitch definition, is to use simple stitch patterns for a couple of reasons. The main reason is you can't see your stitches. So if you have to keep track of a stitch count or a repeat within your row, you're gonna struggle. Not to say that it can't be done, but it's not going to be easy. The other reason why I say to use simple stitch patterns is for the, you know, for the same reason. You can't see the stitches, so why bother to some extent, right? If you're going to put a lot of work into a really pretty stitch pattern, you want that stitch pattern to be visible, to shine, to show off in your project. Well, you're not gonna get that with a fuzzy yarn or something with low stitch definition. So for me, my go-to is single crochet, half double crochet, double crochet. So just the standard plain stitches. And to some extent, the taller ones, trebles, double trebles. Now you can get away with working with like shells or stitches where you're working maybe two or three in the same stitch. That's not quite as difficult because you can sort of feel those stitches and count to keep yourself on track if maybe you get distracted during that project or in the middle of that stitch. But again, you can't always see some of these intricate stitch patterns. So it's just not, for me personally, it doesn't always pay off to put in that extra effort and to put in that extra focus. All right, moving on to tip number two, and that is to count as you go. This is an absolute must for me. I don't love to count my stitches as I'm working through my projects. And most of the time I don't. I'm at the point now where I know where to work my first and last stitch. So I don't really feel the need to count in order to keep my edges straight. But for fuzzy yarns or with yarns with no stitch definition, I pretty much have to every single row. And that's really just to keep me on track to make sure that my edges are straight. And I recommend that you give that a try too, especially if you get to the point where your project may be shrinking a little bit up one side, or maybe it's getting a little bit wider. That could be an issue with where you're putting your last stitch of that row. You're either adding too many or you're taking away one. And that's 
creating the, the size difference, the uneven edges. And maybe as a rule of thumb, you just count your stitches all the time. You count every stitch as you go. Yes, you do have to put more focus into it, but for me, it's worth it because when I get to the point where I stop counting, I'll usually make an oops and I won't realize it for several rows. So I'm frogging back to that point. And so counting my stitches through every single row helps save me some time in the long run. Now moving on to tip number three, and this one is my favorite. I do this all the time, and that is to feel where you need to work your stitches. So use your fingers to help guide your hook where it should go. So here's my thought process behind this. You have your last stitch worked, and because you have some experience with crochet and other projects, you kind of have an idea of how far that next stitch should go. And what I do is take my finger on that last stitch that I made, sort of run it down to the base so that I'm feeling where that stitch is worked in the stitch on the row below, right? And then move that over just a little bit and you'll feel the little opening, the little hole at the bottom. And that guides me and tells me where I should work my next stitch. This one is absolute golden. I use this all the time. And when I don't do this, I often make mistakes. So try feeling your project, feeling where that next stitch needs to go. And I think you'll have a lot more success even if you just do this tip alone. All right, now moving on to tip number four, and that is to pair your fuzzy yarn with a smooth yarn. Now this is something I don't always do, but it is a good option, especially if you're looking for a little more texture in your project. I know, how could you like want more texture when you have a yarn like this? It has so much delicious texture, but if you pair it with a smooth yarn, you'll be able to see that smooth yarn and that will help guide where you put your stitches. They'll be much easier for you to see and probably make the project a little more pleasant to work as a result of that. But just know that if you do this method, it does change the look of your project. If you find a smooth yarn that looks that the, the color is basically the same as your fuzzy yarn. It'll be a little less obvious, but of course, if you're using a contrasting color, this would be a design choice, something that you wanted to bring to your project, an element that you wanted to bring to your project. And keep that in mind. Give it a try. If you've got some fuzzy yarn in your stash that you wanna play around with, you can always frog these so you're saving the yarn, but work up a little swatch so you can see if that is an okay look for what you're going for in your project. Now moving on to tip number five, and that is to make sure the lighting is good. This one seems super obvious, but the other day I was walking on the treadmill. I often will work on a project as I'm walking on a treadmill because I need my exercise, I need to get my steps in for the day, but our treadmill is located in our basement in a room that has no windows and kind of poor lighting. I was working on a project with Velux, which is another novelty yarn. It's fuzzy, but it's not quite as furry as Go For Faux and I'm using a darker color. It's kind of like a deep purpley kind of wine color. I was having a really, really hard time seeing the stitches and this yarn is not difficult to work with. It's much easier than some other fuzzy yarns that you've probably worked with. But because the lighting was so poor in the room that I was in, I was missing stitches. I was working them in the wrong placement, like all together. Make sure that you set yourself up in a room that has good light, whether that be natural light coming from a window or whether that be a light directly overhead. A lot of times I'll crochet at the kitchen table and we've got a light that comes directly in the middle of the table and I will crochet there. Or if you're on the couch, if you have a lamp or something that you can set up right next to you, I think you'll have so much more success and it will be less frustrating, not to mention less strain on your eyes. Now moving on to tip number six, and that is to look for the V. Now I'll be honest, this one's not always gonna work for you. For some yarns, it will. Specifically for go for faux yarn, it will work because it has that band running through the yarn. You can really see the V at the top of your work. 
So to do this, as you're looking to work your next stitch, just flip your project up so that you're looking kind of down on it and you can see the V of that stitch. That should guide your stitch placement. You'll know exactly where to work the stitch. You won't miss them. You won't add too many. Problem solved. But again, that only works with some novelty yarns. It certainly works for Velux. It works for Gopher Faux because of that band. But just know that some of your really fuzzy yarns, some that are maybe more fuzzy than these or kind of out there, this one might not always work, but give it a try and see if it does. And finally, we're moving on to tip number seven, and that is to use simple shapes when creating your projects. Now, if you're following a pattern, this one doesn't really apply to you as much because I'm sure that designer has already taken that into consideration, but working with simple basic stitches and simple basic shapes will really be your best friend with low definition yarns. Anytime I work with a fuzzy yarn, it's always going to be a square or a rectangle or something of that nature because I don't have to see those stitches. I don't have to worry about increases or decreases because counting comes into play when you're working on those. Not to say that you can't do these things. You certainly can work anything with any of these yarns. It's just how much effort do you want to put into it? Now, just remember when working with fuzzy yarns or a yarn that has low stitch definition, its most frustrating quality is often its most forgiving quality. Because you can't see your stitches to work them, you can't see your mistakes either. Unless you have a big hole where you've just missed a whole bunch of stitches, you're not going to see those little mistakes that you make. And that is my saving grace for so many projects. I'm sure if you were to break any project I've worked down with a fuzzy yarn, there's gonna be at least one or two mistakes. And I've been doing this for a long time. So if you're making mistakes with novelty yarns, don't let that stop you because you can't see those mistakes. They're there and it's okay because you can't see them. Now, I would love to know if you have any additional tips for working with Novelty Yarn. Please leave that in the comments below. I think it'll help me improve my skills. It'll help others in the community to work with this yarn because there are so many great benefits to working with different yarns, right? Not only is it fun to work with something different and unique, but you can create some really cool things with a yarn like Gopher Faux. I mean, seriously, this stuff is wonderful to work with. And by the way, a big thanks to Lion Brand for sponsoring Be Hooked TV this season. But I would recommend this yarn no matter what, like whether they were sponsoring the show or not. I was so excited. Out of all of the yarns that they have sent me for Be Hooked TV this year, this is the one that I was most excited about because, well, I couldn't find it in stores and I had to get my hands on it. So again, if you think Gopher Faux might be right for your next project, just check the video description below. I'll have a link there again, directing you to Lion Brand's website. And of course, if you order some as a result of seeing today's episode, no pressure. I'm just really loving this yarn right now. But if you do purchase some yarn through that link, I just wanna say a big, big thank you to you because as a sponsor of the show, that lets them know that they that you found their yarn through watching Be Hooked TV, and that means more seasons in the future. Full disclosure, I mean, I gotta be real about that. By the way, if you have a topic suggestion, if you're really struggling with a certain area of crochet or knitting or yarn in general, feel free to leave that in the comments section on any episode of Be Hooked TV. You can also reach out to me on social, on Instagram if you're there and tell me what you need help with because that's why I'm here. I really wanna help you get better at your craft. All right, now that does it for this week. Bye for now.